welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse. It's good to be back. Miss the part here, back again with another If I Had Written video. And I do want to say, before we get into this, I've been trying to record this over and over again, but I just want to say thank you for all of the support that you guys have shown me over the past few weeks and days um, with everything that had happened. Um, with the surgery and everything, I just want to say thank you for your uh, support, as well as thank you for supporting my brand new series if I had written. Um, I couldn't have done it without you guys. Um, it's amazing to see that everybody's very invested in this brand new series, and the series has to do with uh, me writing projects that uh, haven't come out yet, maybe cancelled projects that have never been, such as, you know, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4, but again, I just want to thank you so much for the outstanding support that you all have shown me, and I cannot thank you enough. That being said, we're going to be going into, if I had written Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 5, and I do want to say, before we get into this video, um, we will be, you know, continuing the story where we left off with Hobgob losing his legs after a brutal battle with Spider-Man and the battle for the city. And now the city is back on track with Spider-Man. You know, things are slowly healing, and Dr. Connors, we don't know what has happened to him with the lizard formula, and if he's turned to the lizard. But if you did enjoy that, um, if I had written episode, this one's only going to get a lot better, and there's a lot more story details. I didn't want to rush into doing any of this, and again, I just want to say I hope you enjoy it because I just wanted to make it as best as I could. And that being said, do make sure to follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Follow the Reddit page and the Facebook page so you're all up to date when I'm posting, when new videos are happening, and also check out the Patreon page. The Patreon, it goes a long way. It really goes a long way to help support uh, me making this content, me upgrading my equipment, and me hiring a lot of people on the Miss the Part Productions team. It really goes a long way to make these videos possible. But that being said, Thank you so much, and what are we waiting for? Let's get to, if I had written, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 5. It was March. Hobgoblin had been in jail for months now, locked away without his legs, or any hope of ever walking again. Despite all the tech he made, he wasn't allowed to access it where he was. He'd never access it again. For the first time in a long time, Peter felt at peace. He had more time to dedicate to MJ, more time to dedicate to himself. That was where he was currently, spending time with Mary Jane. More specifically, he was with MJ while waiting for May to leave. She was going on vacation. Peter felt he could use a vacation too, but relaxing with MJ was all he needed. It was the most relaxation he felt he had gotten in his entire life. Aunt May was loading up the car, getting ready to leave for her holiday. Peter was fiddling with his fingers, glancing at MJ. Over the years, MJ had been caught in the crossfire of all his acts of heroism. Somehow, the villains always found her and took her away. What if the same happened to May? Perhaps Peter was overthinking, but he couldn't get his mind off of it, with her going away. Peter watched the whole process, micromanaging every step of the way. He made sure everything was packed, the car was safe, and her destination was already loaded into the maps and the GPS. The car was safe, and her destination was already loaded into the maps and GPS. Peter, May said, him stopping and signing, I'll be okay, don't worry about me, how can I not, this is important. It's one vacation, don't worry, I'll be okay. Although Peter couldn't believe it, he decided to agree. He sat back with MJ and watched as May finished the process by herself. It was quicker than he expected. In less than a minute, May was ready to say her final goodbyes. Stay safe, Peter said, as he embraced her, refusing to let her go. May hugged back and patted his shoulder, giving it a squeeze as if to say, it's okay. Peter decided to believe her, pulling back and staring into her eyes. Let me know if anything goes wrong. I'll be okay, please believe me. Peter agreed, 
MJ taking her turn to hug May. MJ said her goodbyes. And soon enough, May was gone. Peter watched for a second too long. MJ coming up behind him and giving him a nudge. You stopped Hobgoblin. The people are on your side. You don't need to worry about her, MJ said. Peter relaxing in her grasp. I know. I can't help but worry. Every time I think I keep you out of harm's way, someone always comes and gets you. Hobgoblin got you. You're always right in the center of it. What if May's the same way? And notice how every time you saved me, MJ said. Staying as close to him as she could. I know it's easy said than done, but she'll be okay. I'll be okay. Even you'll be okay. We've been okay. And I know a time will come where everything will be chaotic but we'll be okay then too. Peter placed his forehead on hers, nodding against her. It was a simple word, but it was enough. Peter's main concern was Dr. Connors. After becoming a lizard for the first time three months ago, he hadn't been able to control himself. Although Connors was working on a formula to help combat his lizard form, Peter wasn't sure how far along he was yet. So far he had controlled it, but that was so far. Peter only hoped it stayed that way. Him and Connors had gotten close over the past few months. How could they not? He saved Peter's life. Is there something else on your mind? MJ asked, pulling back enough so they could lock eyes. Still, she kept a hand on his cheek, as to keep him close. Oscorp is mine, Peter said, moving his mind away from Connors. I could do what I want with it, but I'm still not sure what. I've put it off so long, but there's no way I can do that much longer. They'll want an answer soon. That building can't just sit there forever. Well, what do you want to do about it? The city is back to normal. Oscorp could work now. We could get rid of all the bad instead. Focus on the good. It gives Connors more opportunities to work. MJ nodded, rubbing her thumb across his cheek. Okay. Peter still loved being Spider-Man. Spider-Man swung through the city, people clapping for him as he went. There were plenty of cameras flashing, capturing his moments. He really felt like a superhero. It had been a long time since he could think of that. For a while, he felt as though he was just drifting inside of himself, especially after Harry. But ever since Hobgoblin's defeat, Peter gained a bit of confidence in himself. Just a bit. It was night in New York City. The moon shining and showing off the gorgeous skyscrapers that covered the sky. The wind brushed by a swing, searching for crime as the people cheered him on. He was sure his picture would be all over the news tomorrow. As it was, every night he went out to stop crime. It seemed like a common occurrence anymore. He wasn't sure whether he would be grateful or he would be more worried about his image. Of course, there was the occasional crowds that would still agree with Spider-Man's image. But seeing as he was bringing down the crime rate in the city, more and more people were against him. If he was bringing the crime and kept people safe, then there wasn't as much ground to go off of. It wasn't like they had statistics to back up their points that Spider-Man wasn't helping. If anything, the opposite was true. The rates were down. Less criminals were popping up. There was more safety in the city. Spider-Man finally accomplished his goal. Peter dipped down and zipped into an alleyway. It was a hot spot for drug dealers. Peter liked to monitor it. He figured they'd learn by now, but they hadn't. There was yet another deal going down. Spider-Man launched himself down there and called it off. He confiscated it, the men running off before he could do anything about it. He turned it into the police, swinging through the city to stop more crime. There was a shoplifter who was trying to steal pocket knives. For whatever reason, it was a reason Peter didn't want to know. Then, there was a man trying to break into a woman's apartment. Peter stopped that too. Every time he changed locations, he heard clapping and cheering. It was like with each crime he stopped, another person was added to the pro Spider-Man side. Seeing as the news normally only had good things to say about him, he was willing to bet he was in the clear for a while. No more threats of court cases or police arresting him. He kept going around and around for several hours until he decided it was time to rest. He returned back to his apartment with MJ, getting changed after a long day of swinging. Peter didn't exactly have a job, so he went out during the day. 
Without Oscorp, Peter was technically unemployed. However, thanks to the company falling to him, if he accepted the offer, he at least had money. At least, until he could secure a new job. MJ was at the apartment by the time Peter was back and changed. She was lying on the couch, yawning and stretching out her arms. He chuckled and carried her to bed, the two falling asleep together. Peter was beyond ecstatic that they were both able to repair their relationship. It took time and understanding, but they were in a better spot than they ever were before. And when he woke up to see her face sleeping beside him, he realized he was more than okay with staying by her side for the rest of his life. He grinned, kissed her forehead, then he went to get changed into new clothes. Peter grabbed some coffee and put on the news while waiting for MJ to wake up. He sipped from it and considered calling Connors, who had half a job at Oscorp. Ever since it was burned thanks to Hobgoblin, only the two important staff members were allowed inside. Connors was one of them. He got paid for cleaning up and continuing what was left of the research there. Peter could change that by choosing to revamp the place. Still, Peter wasn't sure if that was the best decision. In the moment, it seemed like it was, but he also didn't want to rush into anything so soon after the last CEO was corrupt. However, it seemed as though fate had different plans. The news was running a breaking news story about Oscorp. Apparently, the FBI had been investigating the company ever since it was bombed. They were slow since they were undergoing repairs, but recently, they hammered down and searched more. That was when they found out about all the secrets Oscorp had, particularly the Goblin secrets. On the screen were the words, Oscorp to be shut down. Peter almost spat out his coffee. He coughed and dabbed his lips with the back of his sleeve, sitting on the couch and taking in the sight. Oscorp was being forced to shut down. That meant Peter had no choice but to reject the offer, or taking over Oscorp. That meant whatever funds he had left would be it. He'd have to find a new job, and soon. Not only that, but it impacted Dr. Connors as well. His family wouldn't have the same financial support. Granted, Peter was sure Connors had some savings. But after all the work he did trying to contain the lizard, Peter was sure even that savings account was starting to look dry. Peter forced himself to drink what was left of his coffee, setting the mug down on the coffee table that had one too many stains. Both him and Mary Jane hadn't gotten around to cleaning it yet. The entire apartment was like that. Half an hour later, MJ woke up and Peter filled her in on what had happened. The news about Oscorp and how he no longer had a say. She sat by him and listened closely, but there wasn't much she could do or say to help. No one could help Oscorp now. Peter was sure he'd get a call from Dr. Connor soon. Peter took the time to try and brainstorm ways to help, but he was brought out of his own thoughts by a knock on the door. MJ went to get it. The door opened to reveal Bernard who MJ invited in. He sat by Peter, MJ opting to stand in the kitchen and do the cleaning they so desperately needed to do. Peter, Bernard sat, as the cushion of the couch caused him to sink into his seat. I assume you've heard about Oscorp by now. It's been all over the news this morning. I heard, yes. I guess that means I can't help Oscorp now, right? Right, Bernard replied, his lips twitching into a frown. I wanted to come here and personally offer you Oscorp, but now I have no choice but to sell it. It's the only way to salvage whatever research is left there. Giving it to you will only sour your image. The shutdown won't go away no matter what you do. I can't have this company, and you can't either. Who will you sell it to? That I'm not sure of. I'm sure I'll figure something out. Unfortunately, the FBI are still investigating. I can't sell it until they're done. And that's even if they give me permission to. I wish there was more I could do to help Dr. Connors, Peter said, in a mumble, not really meaning to say it out loud. Me too, Bernard said, signing after. You should come by next week. I'm cleaning up the place, so you should see if there's anything you want before I take it away. I will. Thank you. And for what it's worth, I'm sorry about Oscorp. I know the company could have made a big difference if it was in the right hands. Your hands, Bernard said, slumping his shoulders. That's just how life is. Don't get old, kid. 
it's not as fun as the movies make it out to be. Peter found himself smiling as Bernard stood, bidding his goodbyes to MJ and Peter Parker. He departed, leaving them alone together. MJ took Bernard's spot by Peter, the two falling quiet for a moment. Peter wasn't sure what to say, and it seemed as though MJ wasn't either. His mind was filled to the brim with thoughts of Dr. Connors. He had tried so hard to protect his family, now it seemed like he'd need financial help. Here Peter was, back to feeling helpless. Or maybe not. Maybe there was something more he could do that he just wasn't seeing yet. What will you do? MJ asked, keeping her voice quiet. He could hear a small drip of water coming from their half-broken kitchen sink. There was also the distant hum of cars, occasional honks too. It smelled of coffee, his hands clenching onto the side of the couch, as if that would steady him. Still, despite all the other sounds and smells in the area, all he could focus on was MJ and his mind, the mind that was full of Dr. Connors. Peter lowered his head, then shook it before meeting her eyes. I don't know. Peter went back to Harry's house, just as Bernard said. They were packing everything up to move on with that stage of their lives. There were sheets and boxes littering the ground. Peter could barely step forward without accidentally crushing a box or item. Bernard didn't seem to care. Peter wasn't sure where Bernard was, maybe in the bedroom to get clothes. He let Peter in, then zipped off to go get something. As he said, Peter left him be. Between selling Oscorp and packing up dozens of old objects, Bernard had enough on his plate without needing Peter to shove questions down his throat. Peter tiptoed around the area, taking in his sights. It was just as cozy as he remembered. He felt warm as he brushed his fingers across the walls. There were a few stains, some cracks too. It smelled of coffee, just like Peter and MJ's apartment. Even the carpet had the same fuzzy feeling. It was like stepping into a place more familiar to Peter than his own spider suit. He went to the piles of sheets laid along the walls. They were covering various objects. One was on the couch, another the box that came to basketball. Peter stepped by it, instead going to a sheet that seemed larger than the rest. It was standing upward, propped against the wall, as if to prevent it from falling. Peter's hand trailed down the side of it. It felt like it had a metal frame unable to resist his temptations. Peter lifted it to see a cracked mirror underneath. Just like the rest of the home, the mirror was familiar. It was the same one he spoke to back when he needed gear to defeat Hobgoblin. Although that was months ago now, Peter still felt his breath hitch, his tongue swelling inside of his mouth. He waited. He waited and waited and waited. Harry never came. No voices ever reached out to Peter to tell him how they were doing, or what they thought about how far Peter had come. Still, Peter lingered. He hesitated for longer than he should have. It was greedy, and Peter knew that, but he allowed himself to indulge in his fantasies for a little while longer. Oscorp was approved for selling, Berner's voice said from behind him. Peter snapped back to himself, dropping the sheet and stepping away from the mirror. He didn't realize he had a tear in his eye until he blinked and caused it to fall. He quickly wiped it away before facing Bernard. Did it sell fast? In two hours, Bernard replied, signing and leaning against the covered couch. Sold it to the company named Quest Aerospace. But apparently that company is merging and becoming Alchemax. They were the highest bidders. Maybe they'll turn it around. Will the FBI be involved? Every step of the way. They're making sure there's no changes of Oscorp ever getting corrupt again. They're running vigorous tests on the candidates for the CEOs, doing surveillance to make sure no secret rooms were installed while it was being remodeled. Hopefully no more goblins. Hopefully, Peter agreed. He didn't see anything he wanted to take. It was time to leave that part of him behind. Even if it hurt, he gave Bernard a tight smile. I should probably get going and check on Dr. Connors. I know he won't be happy to hear the news about Oscorp being sold. I doubt they'll let him stay if a new company is taking over. I doubt it too. Are you sure there's nothing here that you need? Bernard asked, stretching his arms out and monitoring to the rest of the interior. Peter gave the place one last glance. It was dusty, 
but still somehow tidier than Peter and MJ's apartment. The sheets made the place feel abandoned and lonely. Peter stalled himself, grabbing onto his fingers and searching. He wasn't sure what he was searching for. All he knew was that he wanted to find it, but he didn't. And that was when he realized he needed to leave. So he went to the door and grabbed the handle, shifting to face Bernard one last time. This time, he gave the man a genuine smile. Goodbye, Bernard. Dr. Connors was a mess. Peter was in the doctor's laboratory, watching as he fiddled with his technology and gadgets. Connors was trying to remain calm, but he mentioned Oscorp's failure four times in the past 30 minutes. Each time, he would apologize and tell Peter he didn't mean to ramble about his problems. He would proceed to ask Peter about how he was doing. That cycle occurred a few times before and Peter decided to remain quiet, and Connors did the same. Peter found comfort in the presence of Dr. Connors. It was like they understood each other more than most. Maybe that was traumatic, but Peter had been suffering. Connors knew Peter was Spider-Man. He recognized the voice, just like how Peter recognized the green eyes from the lizard that saved him. It also helped that they had similar interests. Connors taught Peter that more advanced uses of technology and how it could be applied to daily life. He learned more from Connors in one night than he did for years at the Bugle. That was as sad as it was inspiring. At least it meant Peter was going somewhere with his life. Connors gave him hope that he could amount to more than just Spider-Man. As much as Peter loved Spider-Man, he wanted there to be something for Peter too. Something for MJ and something for his Aunt May. Spider-Man was an amazing legacy, but Peter wanted to feel normal sometimes too. Do you have any extra gloves? Connors asked, glancing at the empty box on his black top desk. I guess between Oscorp shutting down and dealing with this whole lizard thing, I forgot to get a new box. Sure, it's in my bag, Peter said, as he fiddled with the microscope examining Connors' blood. You can get it. It's on your side anyways. It was indeed on Connors' side. It was propelled against the side of the desk, Connors reaching down and opening it. Peter had his spider suit hidden at the bottom, but it didn't matter if he saw it or not. After a minute of riffling through Peter's bag, Connors signed and slowed down. His hands were shaking, bags under his eyes, and more wrinkles than before, crowding the sides of his lips. Peter frowned, but it didn't raise his concerns. Instead, he went back to examining the blood. It was quiet for a few beats. Peter was too memorized by the blood to realize Connors saw the letter Bernard gave him. Peter had it ripped open, meaning the paper was still near the top of the inside of his backpack. He had it with him in case, by some miracle, Oscorp came back and needed a leader. That letter was proof Bernard wanted to make Peter the CEO. However, in this moment, Peter wished he had just thrown the paper away. Peter, Connors said, each letter of Peter's name coming out of Connors' mouth slowly. He rolled the single name around his tongue, as if it was a piece of gum he was chewing on and about to spit out. Why does this say all of Oscorp's assets were left to you? Peter snapped his head back, wondering if there was a way to defuse the situation. Based on Connors' narrowed eyes, there wasn't. Peter held his hands up, as if that made the situation better. I was given a chance to take Oscorp over, but with the FBI and everything. But this dated back in late December. Why haven't you done anything since then? You could have reopened Oscorp. I could have kept my job. The doctor's voice was trembling more as he spoke, his grip tightening around the paper. Peter leaned back to gain some distance preparing himself to get to his bag if needed. There was a hint of green in the doctor's eyes. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you, but I have bad memories with Oscorp. Worse memories than you can imagine. Going back wasn't an option for me, at least not right now. I needed time, but the FBI made it impossible for me to get it. But we could have changed the world together, Connors argued, his eyes flickering full of green. Peter got up and circled around him, not daring to take the letter from his grip. Instead, Peter took his bag and closed it, pulling it over his shoulders. I need to leave. We can talk about this later. But it was too late. 
The lizard was already on its way out, scales bursting to the surface of Connors' skin, his body blistering with shades of green, varying from dark to light. His eyes were a shell of what used to be as a tail sprouted out and broke the desk in half. Peter gasped and almost fell back, but he knew he needed to guide the lizard away from the house, away from the doctor's family. Before him was a giant lizard with claws, as long as Peter's entire left arm, the legs were pointed and wide, scales making up of what was once Dr. Connors. There was no trace of his old friend. All that was, was a beast that took Dr. Connors from Peter. Peter knew there was no point to trying to reason with it. So he dodged the first attack, a claw swipe. Then the tail came. He jumped over it. He stuck to the wall and climbed and his plan worked. The lizard smashed through the wall, leading the outside. With his webs, Peter swung towards the lizard. He wasn't sure what to do other than knock him unconscious, but it didn't matter. The lizard was far stronger. Peter got thrown back, colliding with the ground and rolling over and over again. Rocks dug into his spine, creating small spikes of pain that caused him to groan. As soon as he shot his head up, the lizard was pouncing on him. He was tossed against the ground again, then again, then again. His back felt like it was about to snap in half. By the time the lizard gave him an opportunity to free himself, Peter swung away, but barely. His calf got scratched by the massive claw as he fled. He shouted as blood squirted on the ground, infecting the innocent blades of grass beneath him that were gently brushing by in the wind. Spider-Man didn't give up. He swung up and dodged the next attack. Then, while the lizard was disoriented from the lack of combat experience, Peter hid. He ducked behind a tree, climbing up and watching from a distance to see what the monster would do. It glanced around with a humming noise and wagging tail. It rocked side to side, coming dangerously close to the structure of the small house that seemed like an outliner in New York City. After a full minute of silence, waiting, the lizard left. Peter stayed in the shadows while he tracked it. Although he was injured, he needed medical attention. He decided that the doctor came first. He was in there, inside the lizard, trapped, but there. Peter couldn't give up, not yet. All Peter wanted to do was help. There were so many who were relying on him, and at the same time, there were so many he let down, like Roderick's brother. Ben Parker, Harry Osborne, Eddie Brock, Captain Stacy. The list went on and on. All people Peter couldn't save. He refused to add Connors to the list. They had come too far together. Peter refused to back down until he was forced to be by the Grim Reaper. Peter followed the lizard to the sewer system, but he had lost the beast inside of it. It was dark and smelled of vomit. Mixed with the other odors, Peter didn't seem to have the stomach to inhale. He opted the breath through his mouth, sticking to the gloomy corners of the tunnel. Not that there were too many corners, but the dim lighting helped him blend in. There were lights strung up. There were boxy lights with metal bars acting like cages to keep them contained. Some of them were out. Others were flickering. Very few were actually on the operational to full capacity. The sewer was made of concrete, there were cracks in the walls, and Peter saw a long claw mark. He followed it, avoiding the waters as best as he could. He stuck to the pathway. There were two pathways on each side of the opening in the middle, where all the disgusting liquids and God forbid solids were. Peter was limping thanks to his calf injury, and he had got thrown so much that his suit had a few new holes. But he took the time to slow down and think. He needed help to guide him through this. If he wanted to save more people, he needed to let others in. More people knew about Peter's secret. It was time he did something about that. He decided to call MJ, keeping his voice quiet in case the beast was nearby. But that seemed unlikely. It was a giant lizard. It'd be kind of hard to hide in the sewer. Peter already checked the high ceilings and dimly lit corners. Nothing. That meant either the lizard had escaped, or somehow it was hiding in plain sight. MJ, Peter said, when she picked up. Before she could raise her concern, he signed. It's Connors. 
He found out about Oscorp and how I could have led it. One minute he was getting angry, the next he was turning into a lizard. I'm trying to track him down now, but I'm not sure where he went. How does a giant lizard hide? I'm not sure. Please be careful, are you hurt? Nothing that won't heal, Spider-Man paused, to web up the gash on his calf. But I didn't stop him from limping. I'm more worried about the dock right now. Still, be careful. You're giving me a heart attack over here. I always like to keep you on your toes, Peter replied, as he hushed his tone, crouching to investigate the ground. There was dirt all over the concrete, but no signs of any lizard. Peter chose to stick to the corners, hiding. If the lizard got the jump on him, Peter knew that there wasn't much hope he could win. Although he found it hard to believe, a giant beast could sneak up on him. He also didn't wait. Peter froze, his veins filled with adrenaline as the hairs on his body poked through the little holes presented on his torn suit. The blood flowing down his leg went as still as the rest of him. Then. He heard a roar from behind him. Coming from the intersection ahead was the lizard, jumping out and taking Peter by surprise. He rolled to the side and dodged the lizard's ferocious attacks. Then he shot out a web and swung away. He just barely managed to duck before a claw took off his head. Peter wondered if appealing to the lizard's senses would work. It was worth a try, but seeing as they were in the middle of a battle, Peter opted to keep quiet and go back to work. Peter, what was that? MJ asked, her sudden loud voice making him wince. Lizard, I'll call you back. Before she could protest, Peter ended the call and swung back to the monster. It hissed at him and leapt up to meet Peter halfway. That resulted in Peter getting knocked against the wall. His back cried out in pain. As he landed, his calf burned, his lungs begging for air, and his wrists were weak from the effort it took to keep his onslaught of webs going. The lizard was fast and aggressive, by far the most aggressive opponent Peter had ever faced before. The lizard jumped back before Peter had time to hit the ground. He rolled out of the way, the lizard smashing his fists into the ground. Chunks of concrete flew, two of which hitting Peter and sending him back down. Soon enough, Peter realized this was a fight he couldn't win. He didn't understand enough about how the lizard worked. He needed to flee for now, then come back after thinking about a potential weakness. Or, more accurately, a way to calm the lizard down and bring Connors back. Maybe MJ would have an idea. Right when the lizard went to attack again, Peter got away. He clung to the ceiling and crawled away. The lizard kept trying to swipe at him, but Peter was too high and fast. He made several turns down the intersections as the creature followed him. There was an exit up ahead, Peter about to web himself forward. When the lizard finally caught up with him, it grabbed Peter and threw him. Peter ended up smashing through a gate and going underwater. Unfortunately for Parker, the lizard was just as deadly underwater as he was above. While Peter withered in liquids he didn't want to identify, the lizard seemed to be at home. It swam towards him, and the battle continued underwater. Peter held his breath and shot his webs out, trying to stop the thing from getting any closer. He failed. He was kicked back, and although he moved much slower, he still went out of a pipe and shot out of the sewer system. Again, he found himself underwater. This time, it was clean, it seemed like a lake. Almost. Peter used what was left of his strength to make it to the surface. He gasped and sucked in all the air around him. There were trees surrounding him, crystal clear water covering his body. There was a metal gate elevated off of the ground, planted in the side of a hill. That was where he came from. Seeing as no lizard came out of it, Peter knew he was safe. He treaded water, trying to comprehend what had just happened. He fought a giant lizard that was actually Dr. Connors in a sewer system. Peter didn't have time to stall though, so he got to the trees and hosted himself out. The dirt turned to mud, the moon shining on him as he climbed up a tree to see where he was. He was near the outskirts of the city, but still close enough to swinging there. Peter slumped his shoulders, his calf in scorching pain. Then he swung away. Peter didn't bother with the window, and he didn't have the strength to climb the building. 
So he went back inside Dr. Connors' house, grabbed his bag, shoved his suit inside, then he went home. He went through the front door in time to see MJ waiting for him. Before she could get a single word out, Peter collapsed before her. She rushed to his side and helped him to the tiny kitchen table, not too far away. As soon as he leaned back, he groaned and helped his calf. At this point, he wasn't sure what hurt the most. His back, calf, or wrists. I never told you, Peter whispered, as MJ got first aid. When she did, she kneeled and dealt with his calf, monitoring him to continue. Back in the goblin lair, the thing that saved me wasn't luck or skill. It was Connor's, but in his lizard form. That means there has to be a way to get him back. Peter, there could be innocent workers down there. It'll be my fault if anything happens to them. I can't go through that again. Peter broke off. Images of Harry and Roderick's brother flashing through his mind. I need to regroup, think, then go and get him. He needs my help. He's an innocent man who got caught in a bad situation, abused by a horrible boss. The only reason why he's here is because of that serum. I need to reverse it. There's gotta be a way. You're already injured badly enough, MJ said. Her voice nearly a plea. Please stay. Just a little longer. He met her eyes, placing a hand on her cheek as she held back her tears. I know we've been through a lot. I'm sorry, MJ. I wish I could take back and spend more time with you. These past few months have been great, haven't they? She laughed but it sounded more like a cough mixed with a choke. Yeah, they've been the best. I know. I wish it could be different, but... But isn't it? She finished, placing her hand over his. I know that. I'm not mad at you or blaming you. I made my choice to stay with you, and I don't regret it. The only thing I regret is the pain it brings you. I wish I can take it away. You already do. More than you know you do. Trust me, MJ. This will work find a way to fix this. MJ smiled, and it felt like the most genuine smile he had ever seen. If anyone could fix him, you can. Peter thanked her as she went back to work with helping him, dabbing down any blood that was on his skin, and preparing medicine for him to take. While she did all that, he fell into his thoughts. He remembered all of the times he went over to Dr. Connors' house, spending time with his family in the, at the lab. That was all he did these past few months, and it allowed Peter to learn more about himself and his passion for learning. Connors unlocked that side of him and helped him get through it. What kind of person would Peter be if he didn't help Connors now? That's when Peter realized it. Connors' lab. That was where Connors spent most of his time, trying to find a cure for Hobgoblin. There was a DNA, serum, chemicals, equipment, everything Peter needed to find a way to cure Connors. Seeing as Connors himself was working on a cure, there had to be something left behind for Peter to look at. Connors didn't want to get Peter involved, so he didn't let him see any of the files. But now, despite times called for desperate measures, Connors, his lab, Peter said in a mumble, his eyes widening. I can sneak in and look for a cure. I can look at Dr. Connors' DNA. Maybe reverse engineer a cure. MJ chuckled, packing up the first aid and giving him a smile. Go get him, Tiger. Peter wasn't expecting this. The home he planned on sneaking into was nearly destroyed. There were claw marks on the walls, the door thrown off its hinges, a gaping hole above it, as if someone over eight feet tall barged in. The whole house looked like a shell of what it used to be. Even the roof was on the verge of destruction. Parts of it on the ground. There was glass from the windows. Peter and his spider suit had to tiptoe around it. When he went inside, he saw Martha Connors crying in the center of it all. She was surrounded by chaos. All the furniture either destroyed or overturned. All the pictures of the family were shattered. The carpet torn up with the wooden floorboards exposed. Mrs. Connors, Peter asked as he stepped in. There was no point in sneaking around now. What happened? Through her tears, she whipped her head up and managed to choke out a reply. He took my son. Peter's blood froze inside his body, swirling around his heart, until it caused his eyes to burn. The lizard, 
Dr. Connors. Peter assumed she knew, considering she had to live with him. Based on the way she was nodding, his theory was proven right. There are tracks outside, but I don't know what to do, she said, trembling as she wrapped her arms around herself. Listen, I have a solution. I'm going to need your help, okay? Can you do that? Can you help me? She sniffled, then agreed. After telling her the plan, she took him to the basement where the lab was. There was debris from the fallen house above, but otherwise, it remained mostly intact. That gave Peter more room to work. Although he didn't have much time, he also knew he couldn't save Connors or his son if he didn't go with a plan. He had a limited time frame, but he had to do this. He had to reverse engineer a cure for Dr. Connors. Peter sat and instructed Martha to fetch certain items for him. Among that list of items was Connors' DNA. She was too tired to ask questions about what he was doing and if he was making progress. Not that it mattered. He was too focused to answer her anyways. It went on like that for over an hour, Peter searching through all the evidence he had and wondering if he could manage to reverse engineer a cure in such a short time. They managed to make the first serum for Hobgoblin rather quickly, but this was a completely different animal, literally. By the time the clock ticked closer to two hours, Peter had finally figured out a method to create a serum. It wasn't foolproof, but it was better than nothing. It was the best shot that he had. The lizard was three times deadlier than Peter, and if he went to fight with nothing but his webs, he was sure Connors' son would die in the crossfire. Peter couldn't handle that. No more deaths because of people that were caught in the crossfire. Not again. Never again. Martha ended up sleeping through the half an hour it took Peter to engineer the cure. When he had it bottled up and ready to go, he tried to maneuver around her without waking her. He failed. She opened her eyes, her lids swollen like her lips. She shook her head and was about to stand, but Peter held out his hand. Stay here. I'm going to try and find them. Please, don't get involved. Your son will need you when he comes back, okay? Without waiting for her answer, Peter went upstairs, got changed into his spider suit, shoved the serum in his bag and swung outside. The entire house was outside at this point. His feet hit the ground and he realized Martha was right. There were tracks leading to where the lizard went. There were giant prints in the mud, leading down. As expected, it seemed as though the prince led to the sewer system. Peter winced at the thought of going back inside that wretched place. But as soon as he put his mask, he snapped back into focus and swung his way to the sewer. He entered and he was instantly whacked in the face with a scent of vomit mixed with God knows what else. He held his nose as he pitter pattered his way deep into the sewer. The walls were cracked, some claw marks on them. No signs of any workers, though. That means no innocent life was lost, at least. None that Peter knew of. For once, he was fine with the blissfulness ignorance. Peter continued to tip-tap his feet against the ground, focusing on listening. He heard running water, but no lizard, no scared boy. Just like liquid swishing in the middle of the passageway. Some of it splashed on the concrete Peter was walking on and he made sure to stick closer to the wall. He kept his gloves hand on the side, just in case he needed to climb quickly. The lizard managed to ambush him last time. Although Connors wasn't exactly quiet anymore, he got the jump on Peter last time due to the corners and shadows. Peter made a mental note to keep a closer eye on them. There were also the intersections that hid the next part of the sewer. Whenever Peter came up on one, he made sure to jump into it to ensure no lizard would hop out and stab him. The only issue was that the prince went dead. Peter saw no footprints beneath him, at least none that were his own. He occasionally dragged in some mud from the bottom of his feet. It made him wince as he continued scanning over the area, as if that would give him the answer. That was when he heard a sniffle. It was faint. He had to strain to hear it, but there it was. Peter picked up his pace turning his walk into a trot. That trot turned into a sprint, when there was another sniffle, followed by a beg, a plea. It was a boy's voice, and Peter swung into action. He turned the next intersection, spotting the lizard not too far away. It was hissing and groaning at the boy. 
it held captive. Spider-Man had the cure in his hands, waiting for the perfect chance to strike. The lizard hadn't noticed him yet, which allowed him to bask in the shadows, relishing the element of surprise he had. Peter crept along the walls, Connors' son spotting him. Luckily, the kid was smart. Smart enough not to draw attention to it. He stared for a beat, then brought his eyes back to the lizard. The creature didn't notice, or if it did, it didn't turn to see who was there. Spider-Man got as close as he could, thanks to Peter crawling around in the sewers and mud earlier. He blended in with the environment. The lizard's nostrils flared, as if taking in the scents around him. But Peter flew under the radar that got him close enough to make the jump. With all of his strength, Peter sprung into action, hopping on the creature's back and pulling out the cure. A ferocious roar ripped itself free from Lizard's throat. Peter got thrown off before he got the chance to jab it with the cure. Peter groaned as he fell into the water, getting a mouthful of disgusting sewer water that tasted so bad it made his eyes burn with tears. Peter broke free to the surface, coughing and swinging out before the Lizard could grab him again. Connors' son was left behind, still a hostage while Peter did his best to battle the beast. Together, they went back and forth, Peter jumping around and staying as a line as possible. If he were to survive, he needed to stay strong and on his toes. The lizard had brute strength, but Peter had the agility to move around at a fast pace. That was exactly what he did. He swung clung and dove. He had to go back inside the water to dodge a strike, but that ended up being the wrong move. Right when Peter went to come up for air, the lizard beat him to it. Peter was forced back down. A giant claw held him in place. Peter scrambled to fight back, using his webs to grab onto anything he could. He shot and shot and shot. Nothing. He received no help from his webs or from his strength. The lizard was too strong. It was drowning Peter. Peter fought as hard as he could, but the life drained away from him. His strength left him and he found himself slipping under. Or he did. Then a female voice rang out, echoing down the walls of the sewers. Stop. The lizard actually stopped. It got off of Peter, allowing him a chance to get up and gag. His entire body was on fire, burning with agony from the near-death experience. Peter glanced up to see who saved him, and he was horrified to see Martha Connors there. Her son was close, but the lizard stood in between the two. She seemed as though she wanted to run to him. Peter mentally begged she wouldn't. He already didn't want her here. It put all of them in danger. In the struggle, the cure fell from Peter's grasp, and he knew it was in the water, right by his feet. He didn't want to make any sudden moves to alert the lizard. After all, Martha had it distracted. Peter opted to use his webs instead. As quietly as he could, he grabbed the serum that was in the water and snapped it into his grip. Despite how quiet he was, the lizard whipped around and snarled. Peter froze, as if that would make him invisible to the beast. It hissed and whipped its tail, knocking Peter back and causing him to drop the serum. Before Peter could react, the lizard stomped on it and closed the distance. The saying was true. When you were close to death, your entire life flashed before your eyes. As the lizard's claw sunk into Peter's body, he saw everything. Otto was first. Peter saw the face of a man who sacrificed himself to fix the city. Then there was MJ and his life with her. Aunt May on vacation, unprotected despite how Peter was told over and over again that she would be fine. Uncle Ben plagued his mind more than the others, but that changed when Harry came into his mind, his friendship that ended far too soon. As he staggered back, he clung to the image of Harry until it fizzled away into the abyss of Peter's mind. The lizard pulled its claw out and let Peter bleed out. Blood poured out of the wound near his gut, the lizard snarling and pinning him to the wall. The force of the pin caused the sewer walls to crack and break off. Some pieces dropped by Peter's side, him coughing out a sea of red. Peter did all he could to fight back, but the lizard still had the upper hand. It ripped Peter's mask off in the struggle, and Peter's face was shown. All at once, time seemed to slow. The lizard and Peter locked eyes. Martha yelled out in horror, 
her son rushing over to her. Both of them were pale, their jaws wide open like their eyes. The lizard glanced between them, and it was then that the struggle continued. Instead of a struggle between Peter and the lizard, it was a struggle between Connors and the lizard. Peter dropped to the ground, the lizard crying out in pain, holding its head as it spun around. Peter webbed up his wound while he could, but it didn't stop the agony that coursed through his veins. He was still coughing out blood even as the lizard morphed back into the man Peter recognized. Dr. Connors was there, panting and sobbing from the realization of it all. His family stood mere feet away, their bodies shrouding as he glanced up and held out a hand to them. Please forgive me, Connor said in a wail, his chest heaving in sweat staining the sides of his head. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. Please, I didn't mean for any of this. Much to Peter's surprise, the family shared a hug, but it was brief. Martha and her son rushed to Peter's aid as soon as they gave Connors what little comfort they could. Martha told him to stay calm but he couldn't. The wall behind him was crumbling, pieces of it breaking off. Right as he gained the strength to stand, his spider sense flooded over his body. He gasped and pushed Martha and his son back. However, he didn't see the results of his efforts. The wall collapsed, falling all over Peter. He was about to cry out for help, but a piece of it slammed against the back of his head. Everything went black. Connors couldn't move. The wall collapsed, leading to chaos. Peter was trapped under the debris. His wife was unconscious, and his kid was sliding down the concrete. Thanks to the destruction of the wall, the entire sewer was on the verge of collapsing. At least, this side of the sewers, the water that was still red from Peter's blood, was spilling everywhere. They were angled downwards. The wall on the far end of the sewer cracked, almost like it was going to break. Connors trembled, glancing at the three he cared for most. They were in this situation because of him, all because he couldn't control himself, because he couldn't come up with a cure faster. And beyond that, he destroyed the cure Peter had. He think he did, anyways. His memories of what had happened while the lizard took control weren't the best. As he stared at his family, his son gradually sliding down more and more, his eyes shifted, his skin bubbled, his strength doubling. This time, he was in control. He groaned and grunted, but it paid off. The lizard was under control. Back in his lizard form, he stumbled. Still, not used to being in control, he pushed through, grabbing his wife and prancing back towards the entrance of the sewer. He put her there, going back over so he could get his son and Spider-Man next. However, everything changed when the back wall gave out and the angle that they were at changed. They began sliding as the foundation gave out, his son moving much faster now. His wife was close to him, so he reached out and wrapped his arms around her so she wouldn't take the impact. Right in time, Spider-Man woke up, thanks to the fall. He was able to escape the debris, grabbing Connors' son. They went, falling out of the sewer. There was a pipe that led to a muddy area. Connors cradling his wife in his arms as they fell. When he hit the ground, pain shot up through his body. He coughed as his lizard powers faded from him, setting his wife down safely on the ground. There was a lake nearby, the trees covering the night sky. Connors stared at the stars, his claws going limp, as he slowly turned back into his normal form. He glanced down and saw the issue. He landed on a boulder that broke skin. There were many of them in the area, but thanks to the edges, it penetrated him. Even in his lizard form, he landed too hard and too fast on it. Blood surrounded him, and an eerie calm washed around his veins and slid off of it. Holding his injured back that had a large gash on it, Connors would physically survive, but his mental state had already had a nosedive. Now what was left for him to do? Connors was completely back to normal, his skin the same color he had gotten used to before the lizard took over. He shrouded bringing his hands to his face, as if that would throt out the sorrow he caused, and went quiet for a few beats. Then, his wife snapped back into consciousness right as their son approached. Peter was in the background, stumbling and trying to regain his footing, blood still dripping down his skin, but Connors couldn't focus on that seeing as Martha tapped his chest to get his attention. 
I'm sorry for everything, Connor said, his voice no louder than a mutter. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, we know. We're going to help you, we promise. Martha replied, giving him a smile through her tears. They had no home, no idea where to go from there, but they were a family reunited. At the very least, they had that. It was Peter's turn, and his family knew that. They backed away and gave Peter the space to come closer. As soon as he was close enough, he took Connors' hand. Before he could open his mouth, Peter beat him to it. I forgive you, was all he said. The three words meant more than any monologue ever could. Connors didn't hide his tears. He embraced them with warmth he hadn't had since the lizard entered his body. Thank you for everything. Peter dipped his head in a nod, helping Connors up. They heard sirens in the distance, so that was where they went. They trekked through the forest until they found the cars, and Peter was quick to hide himself. Connors grinned as he watched Spider-Man swing away. He truly was a hero. Spider-Man was free, yet another threat had been stopped, and it seemed as though a happy ending was in store for Peter and his little family. He was on the way to visit family now, MJ. The city was just as gorgeous as ever as he swung through it, the lights flashing on his face, the smell of hot dogs, floating the air. There was also the breeze that brushed by his suit, him ducking and diving to avoid public eye. His suit was torn, and it was better to be safe than sorry. He navigated the familiar place, heading back to his apartment in no time. As soon as he opened the door, he was whacked in the face with the scent of bleach. Peter glanced over and saw MJ scrubbing down the counters and making their home tidy. He kicked the door shut and she snapped around at that. She called out his name and sprinting to him, jumping into his arms. Peter relished in the comfort, giving her a squeeze and smelling the clean supplies radiating off of her sweater. It's been a long night, he said, holding his injuries. She glanced at them, making sure to keep her hands away from them. It's over now, she replied. And just like that, they kissed. The smell of the bleach fell into the background as he shut his eyes and enjoyed each second. He counted, his mind spinning and his body exploding with relaxation. When they parted, Peter explained what happened while she helped treat his wounds. After, he went back to their room and fiddled with his gear. There were two more things he had to do tonight. The first, and the most obvious, was to create another serum for Dr. Connors, and he knew the formula, which meant he could create another with some time, and he had that time. Several hours later, he recreated the serum with what he had. He said his goodbyes to MJ and left the apartment one more time with his bag on his back, swinging to Dr. Connors' house to give him the serum. Although the house was on the verge of collapsing, Peter spotted the family inside. They were cleaning up, bringing their home back to life. The door was fixed, but he still saw scratch marks and dents that wouldn't heal. Peter came closer, keeping himself out of the view and ducking under any broken windows. He approached the door, holding the serum in his hands. It was Connors' choice now. Get rid of the lizard, or learn to control it and use it for good. Peter placed the serum in front of the door, staring at it and brushing his fingers on it for a beat longer than needed. The situation felt familiar. He could hear voices in his mind, flashbacks plaguing his eyes every time he shut them. So before leaving, he took a note from his bag and jotted a few words on it. He placed it on the serum, knocking on the door and swinging away before anyone could see him. Peter waited in the shadows to ensure they received the serum. Now it was time for the second thing Peter had to do tonight. Mission one successful. Connors picked up the vial and flipped it over in his hands, glancing at the note. The words in the note had Connors stalling, and Peter knew that it would happen. He heard the same words once, so he felt the need to write them on the note. With great power comes great responsibility. The door snapped open. The sunlight poured down and illuminated May's face. As she greeted them, Peter and MJ giving her a grin. It was evening, and May had come back from her trip. Peter opted to see her first thing to announce the big news. I'm so glad you came back okay, Peter said. May waving him off. I always do, how are you? As if being unable to hold back any longer. MJ held her left hand off. The ring 
twingling in the setting sun. Meg gasped and covered her face. Only a few beats later, the tears came. They streamed down her face, and she couldn't hold back. She embraced MJ and Peter. Peter got squished, coughing from the intensity of the hug. Her strength amazed him. It must run in the family. I can't believe it, she said as she pulled back, clapping her hands together. Even MJ was shocked by the ring, and she had it for days now. I'm so happy for you. Thank you for showing me, Peter grinned. But he got caught off by shouting in the distance. The three of them went stiff, slowly turning their heads to see a fire far away. There was a blaze at the old warehouse Peter recognized, thanks to his countless swings through the city. Compared to many of the crimes he dealt with daily, this one seemed rather small, especially when compared to Dr. Connors. Although there were sirens, meaning the fire department was likely already there, Peter knew he couldn't ignore his duty. For the longest time, Peter struggled with the idea that he couldn't save everyone. It got under his skin and chewed on his heart until it shattered. Despite his feelings, he knew he had to persevere because if he didn't, then no lives would get saved at all. He couldn't let Uncle Ben down like that. He couldn't let Harry down like that. The trio shared a glance, but it was May who spoke first. Go get it, Tiger. MJ laughed, Peter joining in a second later as he brought his trusty bag forward. He could never go anywhere without it. Him being Spider-Man and all, after changing in the bathroom, Peter was ready to swing out into the world and be Spider-Man. MJ and May gave him some space as he leaped, swinging from the building to building and going back into the heart of the city. The setting sun was the same color as the burning building. There were people relying on him, so he let out a breath and he wouldn't let them down. MJ watched in silence. MJ was clapping, laughing from the adrenaline out of it all. May was sure MJ had a blast living with the Spider-Man. The man who saved lives on a daily basis, stopping villains and criminals alike. It would be admirable. May almost admired it. Almost. The burning warehouse had clouds of smoke circling the area around it. It was far enough that they couldn't do anything with swinging powers, but close enough that they had that they could see the details and hear the sirens. It was like that they were staring at it through a window, on the outside looking in. He's got this, MJ said, giving May a glance, and it would have been reassuring, but May didn't care enough to meet MJ's eyes. You and him worry about each other a lot. It's cute, I'm sure, May replied, her voice scratching in her throat, as it passed her lips. As soon as MJ looked away, May observed the woman. She was alone, vulnerable. Spider-Man went to go help others, leaving May open. Seeing as she was admiring the view of Spider-Man saving more people, this was the perfect opportunity. May took a step back, slowly not alerting MJ to the sudden change. May held her hand in front of her, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Spider-Man was too far now, not that he would even know. May stared at the back of MJ's head. Then, a sinister smile glanced her lips as the figure took action. And that is going to be if I had written Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 5. Imagine if we had a Spider-Man 5 somewhere in the multiverse where the series continued after Spider-Man 3 and we had Spider-Man 4 and 5. Now a lot of people really liked how I did the emotion with Spider-Man 4 and I had to make it a lot different with Spider-Man 5 and have different messaging. And now a lot of people are probably questioning what happened with Aunt May at the end. And if you don't know who the next villain is, I just teased Mysterio. So it will be an interesting battle between Spider-Man and Mysterio as Mysterio knows all about Spider-Man and the warehouse that he's going to or he went to was where Norman Osborn had died, where he was killed, where the first fight began. So it's gonna be an interesting take on Spider-Man 6 once we get into that, but I hope you enjoyed. Um, if I had written Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 5, um, thank you so much for the amazing support. Again, I do wanna thank you for 
all the support that you've shown me uh, over the past few days, the past few weeks. With everything that had happened, it really means a lot. I'm really glad to be back here making content, uh, making videos for everybody. Um, I do want to say that we will be hiring more artists on the channel soon. So if you're an artist and you uh, want to work with Miss the Part Productions, uh, that opportunity will be coming soon. But that being said, I do want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's content. Uh, if you enjoy this video and would like to see more, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. Also, I do want to say, make sure to support the Patreon if you can, as uh, the Patreon really goes a long way. I also want to thank all my Patreon and YouTube community members. Also, do make sure to join the YouTube community if you want to. Uh, you can just click the join button it's starting at just one dollar a month and it goes a really long way to helping me with more content uh hiring more people on the team as well as me just you know it just helps with production so that being said again thank you so much for watching i hope this was an entertaining episode if i had written there's going to be a lot more coming out with spider-man 6 we have the amazing spider-man 3 coming out soon as well as the kang dynasty and secret wars but anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care